In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Logitech MX Keys Mini. The MX Keys Mini is an awesome, sleek and compact Bluetooth keyboard that's perfect for people who have multiple devices that they're trying to use it with. It allows you to store up to three devices at one time in the Bluetooth pairing, so you can switch seamlessly from multiple computers, iPads, phones, Apple TV, really any device that has Bluetooth. I'm mainly using the MX Keys Mini on my MacBook Pro, and it feels like a familiar, comfortable keyboard to use. I really appreciate that even though it's a wireless keyboard, it has backlighting and it recharges using USB-C instead of lightning, which just makes my whole setup a little bit sleeker and easier to use. The Keys Mini has one fixed angle that I find to be pretty comfortable to use. It would be nice if it had adjustable feet on the back so you could adjust it from higher and lower settings, but it's totally fine the way it is. The Keys have a little bit of travel, more than a MacBook Pro keyboard, but they don't have as much travel as a mechanical keyboard does. So it's a really fast keyboard with a good tactile feel to it. The keyboard has minimal noise when you use it too. It's a quiet keyboard with just a faint clicking sound. Perfect for use in an office with other people around. The MX Keys Mini has both Windows and Mac symbols on it. So whether you're using Windows or Mac, you're gonna find it to be a comfortable, easy keyboard to use. I was a little bit surprised when I compared the weight of the MX Keys Mini to the Magic Keyboard because it's quite a bit heavier than the Magic Keyboard is. And I think it has a bigger battery to power the backlight. So that's probably where the extra weight comes from. So this keyboard is not quite as portable as a Magic Keyboard is, but the small size makes it great for desktop use. One of the great things about this keyboard is that it uses Bluetooth low energy and you get these device pairing buttons that you can assign this keyboard to use with different devices without having to repair it every time. So whether you're using a Mac or an iPad or really any other device that uses Bluetooth, you can save that as a setting, so if you wanna change from one device to the next, all you have to do is press the button and hold it for just a second, and before you know it, it'll be connected to a different device. To put the keyboard in Bluetooth pairing mode, just press the desired slot and hold it for about three seconds, and then the backlight will start to blink to show you that the keyboard's now in pairing mode. Then you can go to the Bluetooth settings of your phone, your computer, your Apple TV, whatever device you're using it on, and you can add the keyboard from there. The MX Keys Mini uses USB-C to recharge it, and you get about 20 weeks of battery life if you don't use the backlighting, or you get 10 days of battery with the backlighting on. And you're always able to use it plugged in too. All it comes with is a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. But if you wanna use this device with USB devices that don't have Bluetooth, you can use one of these Logibolt receivers that can be purchased online, or they come with some other devices like the MX Master 3S mouse. Probably the biggest draw of this keyboard is the multi-device support because you can change devices without having to repair it every single time like you have to do on the Magic Keyboard. One thing that's kind of sad about the compact keyboard versus using the MX Keys S or another full-size Logitech keyboard is you lose having function buttons on F1, 2, and 3. You can still hold function down to access different shortcuts with it, but it's kind of sad that you lose the ability to use things like screen brightness up and down like you get on the full size version of this keyboard. But it's a trade off that's worthwhile because you can pair this keyboard with so many different devices at once. Logitech also allows you to use the Logi Options Plus app to reprogram what all the different buttons on the function row do, except for the three device changing buttons. Just note that while you do get several neat options from Logitech, like there's an emoji button, a dictation button, a screenshot button, and you can adjust the brightness on the keys, you do lose some of the Mac specific function keys that are pretty universal across the board, whether you're using a laptop or a Magic Keyboard. So it's just a little bit different getting used to the function keys on this, but you can always use the Logi Options Plus app to reprogram what F4 through F12 do if you desire to do that. Another thing that's really cool about the Logi Options Plus app is you can actually have app specific shortcuts. So if you have Final Cut or Excel open, you can program the function buttons to do something different than what they would otherwise be doing. Let's talk a little bit about this keyboard on Mac. It is slightly different from the Magic Keyboard, namely in the fact that you have a backspace and delete button instead of just the delete key on Mac. Now you can still hold the function button down in the bottom left, which is really nice because you can hit that plus backspace and on a Mac that will still delete characters. One thing that is different about this keyboard is the function and control buttons are reversed of what they are on the Mac keyboard. So that's a little bit confusing. But Logitech also has another version of this keyboard that's available that's called the MX Keys Mini for Mac. And this fixes that issue. But the problem with that keyboard is it's only available in the pale gray color. 
so you're stuck with that one color option if you buy the MX Keys Mini for Mac. But if you get the standard MX Keys Mini, it comes in graphite, pale gray, rose, and black. This keyboard is the black one. If you want it to match base gray MacBook, I would recommend buying the graphite keyboard. The MX Keys Mini retails for $100, and I think for this, it's a pretty fair price, especially when you compare it to Apple's Magic Keyboard and other pro-grade keyboards on the market today. It's really comfortable to use and to type on, and I really enjoy using this with all my different devices. I think my biggest complaint with this keyboard is that it weighs just a little bit more than I would like it to, and the way that the back is raised up makes it take up a little bit more space if you're gonna throw it in a backpack or travel with it. So this is definitely a better keyboard for keeping on a desk or in one area versus throwing it in a backpack or traveling with it. To tie it all together, this is a great keyboard and I would highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a nice small keyboard without having all the number keys on the side. Especially if you do a lot of video editing and creative work, it'll just put your keyboard that much closer to your mouse versus using a full size keyboard with all the different number keys on the side. If you're interested in buying an MX Keys Mini, I have links for it in the description below. Also check out my other videos for reviews of the Logitech MX Anywhere 3S mouse, the MX Master 3S mouse, the MX Keys S, and I'm also going to be taking a look at a lot of the different mechanical keyboards that Logitech offers. So subscribe to my channel, check out all those other videos for more wireless keyboard and mouse content.